So we're just about done finishing up our game here. We have a pretty convincing Flappy Bird recreation of the main game. We don't have a title screen or any of the other fancy stuff the original Flappy Bird had, but we have a pretty convincing main game. The only thing that's left to do now is add just a final few finishing touches and then we can get on to building the project. So obviously the most notable thing here is the fact that our background is still blue. There's no background, so we have to change that. In the Flappy Bird sprites, there is a background. There's two backgrounds actually, there's one for day and night. I'm just gonna drag in the day one for now, because that's all we're gonna need. Make sure the filter mode is at the point and hit apply. Now, there's a bit of an issue. We can actually drag our image right into the back here, but there's a bit of an issue with it. The reason we have an issue is that its size doesn't actually match the resolution of our screen. On the mobile app, it would look something more like this, where you could see all the screen background and the, the city in the back. For now, I'm just going to kind of max it out, just kind of stretch it up, and we can move it up to get a... Uh, a look that looks something like that so it doesn't look terrible um but it also doesn't look exactly like the mobile version in my original version of this app when i originally started to use bolt when i made flabby bird i made the background move along with the bird the reason i'm not going to do that now is only because this actually isn't a perfect texture it's not a perfect image some images are designed in a way where they can wrap around again and they could just seamlessly repeat without you knowing that there's multiple images moving this is not one of those images so it's significantly harder to make something like this loop you'd have to edit everything manually which is just kind of annoying so i won't be showing you how to do that now just size it up stretch it and then do whatever you want to get a look that you think looks nice now one other thing we need to do is a restart when the player loses you can't restart the game, so that is what we need to add now. So, if we're going to restart our frame, I'm actually going to do this code in a separate game object. I'm going to call this one Scene Manager. In the case where you would have multiple scenes, maybe one for a title screen, maybe you want to have multiple levels, you'd add multiple scenes. Scenes, by the way, are these little things here, these projects. When Unity starts up, it generates one automatically called Sample Scene, which is what we've been working in this entire time. You can add more of these scenes and swap between them if you want to add levels or a title screen or anything else you can just add another scene and then you can move to that scene while you're playing your game so for now we're not going to be swapping scenes i'm just going to create one called scene manager and uh we're going to add a flow graph to that so bolt flow machine new macro i'll call this scene manager again and we're here with a fresh flow graph First up, we need to know if the bird is alive or not. So we need to get our is alive variable like we've done many other times. We're gonna create a variable that stores our game object that has our is alive variable. So I'm gonna create a variable called bird and this will be a game object and we're gonna slide our bird in here because our bird has our is alive variable. So I'm gonna delete our start event because we don't need it for now. So we only have our update event. I'm gonna drag this out. We're gonna grab a branch block now we need to check if is alive is true. So we can drag this out. We're going to scroll down to variables, object. We're going to get object variable. We want a blank one because we can't right now access is alive. So type is alive in this string box exactly how it is on the bird. And then for the game object here, we can drag that out again, go to variables, object, and then get bird. Now we also are going to need to check if the player clicks on his mouse because what we're checking for is if the bird is dead when the player clicks on their mouse it'll just restart the scene again so we're actually going to disconnect this drag this out we're going to grab an and block and we can drag our code here into our a so we want to check if this equals true and if our mouse input equals true so if you look up input mouse uh it's a bunch of options in this case, you want input for get mouse button down. That way it'll check if you're clicking your mouse button. In fact, we can actually plug this into an OR block. So if I drag out our B node and we grab our OR block here, now we can also check, we can say if our mouse button goes down or if we press in our spacebar. 
So remember, we can press our spacebar to make the bird fly. So if you look at input, we want one of these get key down blocks. Here they are. For now, we can do name. The reason we chose this one is because this one wants to type in the specific name of our key, which in this case we know is space. So what this is doing, it's checking if our mouse button down, remember if the value here is zero, that means left mouse button, or if our space is down, it'll return true. And then if, it, if this is true and this is true, then we can say restart our game. So if we want to restart our game, we can just load the sample scene again. So let's drag out true. You can look up load scene, and you can see there's a bunch of things here. We want scene manager, load scene, and there's two options here. In this case, we just want the second one. We don't need this other mode variable the first one offers. So our scene name is sample scene. Of course, you could rename this if you want to level one or level and then you can just type that in here, but I'm gonna keep mine as sample scene. So now if our game is over and I click or press my spacebar, it should restart the game. My bad, I forgot something. Um, so by default, we have is alive set to true, which means this will always equal true whenever we click, which means the scene will repeatedly get reset. So we wanna get the opposite of is alive. And drag out A here, and we wanna use this negate block. What this negate block does is it flips the value of our boolean. So if our boolean is true, it'll flip it to false, which is exactly what we want. Before you play test the restarting, one thing I would recommend doing is taking your background and moving it to Z level one. What the Z coordinate does is it changes the Z position of the game object, simple enough. But you may be thinking, this is a 2D game, there can't be a Z value. Well, if you click this 2D button up here, you'll notice that the game switches into a 3D view. Unity's 2D game engine actually runs in its 3D engine. And if I change the Z value, you can actually see it moving. You can't see it in the 2D view because it runs in an orthographic camera, which means there's no perspective to the camera. You can't see when something's moving closer or further away from it. But you can see if I move the background in front of the bird, bird actually disappears. That's because the background's going in front of the bird and the camera can no longer see it. So I'm going to move it to level one. The reason I'm doing that is because the pipes actually spawn on level zero. So that means the textures will conflict with the background, which just is not very good for the game. And I've moved the bird up to Z level negative one because now it's in front of the background and the pipes. And the camera by default should be positioned at level negative 10 although you can move this as far back as you want uh, as long as it's in front of everything it'll see everything so back in the 2d view we can test our game and you should see as we hit the pipe the game over thing will appear and then if i click to restart it'll restart our game window so the only thing left to do now is build our game building in unity is pretty simple it's up in the file on the top left and then build settings this is your build window. There's a few things here, but you only really need to pay attention to like two. Um, this is your scenes. All the scenes that you make here, you're gonna have to drag up in here so that they'll be included in the final build. That's important if you have multiple levels, you can drag them in one by one in order. That way the game can progress through the levels properly and everything will be saved correctly. Over here are your platforms. We're gonna keep our platform to PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. That basically means it'll build this game to run on all three of these platforms. They're specific for Windows, Android, WebGL, which runs in a browser. Even PS4 and Xbox One are here, and I even think tvOS might be Apple TV. But we're just gonna focus on this top platform. Now you don't need to change anything here. We're just gonna hit build. I'm gonna save mine to my desktop, but click wherever you wanna save it. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm calling this one Flappy Bird. I'm gonna select the folder and it should start to build. Once it's finished building, the loading bar should go away. You can close out of this and a folder should have opened, which has all your game stuff in it. It should generate, this is how Unity files generate. It has a data and a few other folders. All you need to do is pay attention to this application, which has your game in it. It should be the name of whatever you called your Unity project. So if I click on the game to open it, you should see you have your very own 
version of Flappy Bird that you made yourself. Now, now that you've made your own version of Flappy Bird, I'm challenging you guys to add your own stuff to it. Maybe get the background to move by itself. Uh, maybe modify the pipe speed, modify the bird side. Just do something crazy with the game. Change a bunch of values and try to make it unique and just experiment. That's the biggest thing for tutorials. You can follow a tutorial, but if you don't practice it, you're not going to learn much. So my challenge for you guys is to go and make the game different. I'll have my Discord linked in the description if you want to share with me what you've made. Thanks for watching to the end. I believe this was the last video in this series. I think we're going to go back to doing some Game Jam stuff, so that'll be really exciting. So subscribe if you are looking forward to that. Videos were a little slow because I had a bunch of school stuff, but hopefully school work is going to slow down a little bit so I can get back to making some videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.